Another long day. There don't seem to be any short ones anymore <laughs> lately. Yeah, unfortunately, they're all 24 hours long, but we need a few more hours in the day. Yeah, yeah, yes, with no assigned tasks, so we can catch up on all the tasks that we haven't caught up with. Uh, <laughs> hey, friends, you're watching Brainstorm Makers. I'm Henry. And I'm Irene. We're going to talk about a topic that we've had a few questions about that I'm not sure we see eye to eye on everything, but we're going to talk about it anyway. We haven't discussed any of this in advance. I'm not even sure what he's going to talk about, so that's going to be interesting. <laughs> you know, we've had a fair number of questions about have we ever thought about throwing in the towel mm -hmm. on the off-grid homestead? Under what conditions would we leave the homestead and those kinds of things? So what's your thoughts about have you ever thought about throwing in the towel? Yeah, I couldn't afford it financially. Yeah, that is that is one big thing. You know, we, we had sold our property in California, not because we wanted to, but because we got had to, because we got caught in one of those, Henry was laid off because his boss didn't believe in carpal tunnel. By the time it was all done, it had messed things up so that we couldn't refinance our property and we had to either sell it or lose it. We couldn't afford to stay there. We were literally forced out of the state by finances. Fortunately, we had purchased this place anticipating using it as a vacation place, a, maybe a base of operations for travel, but while we were deciding where we wanted to live eventually someday. We actually hadn't planned on this being a permanent place that we lived year round. It's a wonderful location to come, or, uh, come to at certain times of the year. At other times, it's less wonderful, and since climate change has really affected this part of the United States, it's become even less wonderful. It's a much more difficult environment than what he would have naturally chosen. So have you thought about throwing in the towel? Other, oh. than, other than the fact that we would be at a significant financial disadvantage? Well, yeah, I have, but you know, you have to ask yourself, where would you go? How would you afford to go anywhere? Could you sell this place? Well, right now properties are selling like crazy out here because people are trying to leave the city. But could you sell it for enough to be able to start over somewhere else? And the answer is generally no, not in a part of the United States we would want to live in. We actually wanted New Mexico. We didn't want Arizona. We'd lived in New Mexico before. We were familiar with the culture. We were familiar with the climate. And we knew that there were places there where we could get good quality farmland and actually do whatever kind of homestead thing we wanted to do. Yeah, my, my attitude, my approach to our place here has changed with time. Mm -hmm. If we talk about before February 17th, 2017, I would say I can foresee staying here until my dang, until my dying days. Mm -hmm. That car accident changed a lot because all of a sudden I couldn't do some of the things that I would normally do. There's been a change in my attitude towards towards would I ever leave? Mm -hmm. Now we're we're also probably a lot older than a lot of the people who oh, yeah. ask these questions. Oh yeah. A lot of the people who ask these questions are in their 30s. And some in their 40s. Yeah. Uh, but basically, some of the changes of mindset occur due to life experience and just practical thing. For our age, we're in great shape. We really are. Um, you know, most of what we take is a few supplements and stuff like that. Henry does take meds partially because of his accident. But we have friends right now who are dealing with some real serious decisions. We've got a friend who could wind up on dialysis. If he winds up on dialysis, he can't live here anymore. Now, he lives out here right now, and yeah. he's a great guy. He's yeah. been here as long as we've been here. Yeah, he's older than we are by yeah. a lot. To him, living out here is just awesome. He loves it out here. He's lived out here for a very long time, 
And the thought of having to move to Phoenix, which is where he's, he's got family, is like he'd run in front of a car first. You know, I mean, he just, I mean, he thinks of it as living death. We've known people who were told, you have to live within 15, 15 minutes, minutes of a trauma center. Our personal experiences with people who've lived out here, if the husband dies, the wife will usually be gone within six months. Now, yeah. there's, a, there's a very small number of people there's a very small number of women who don't flee the homestead. Right, and some of those came out here by themselves in the first place, so it's a different mindset. And they're very independent, and they're physically active, and they're able to do this. The couples who came out, say, in the 60s, you know, she's the little homemaker, and he's the handyman dude, and, and never the twain shall meet. They don't have a lot of overlap. I mean, one of the things that Henry and I have always emphasized, we emphasized it with our kids when they were little, is the girl had to learn to use a hammer and a screwdriver and the boy had to learn to be able to cook. And so. And so. And, you know, so there had to be this I'm not a useless person thing going on. There's things that Henry prefers to do and there's things that I prefer to do. If a button falls off and I'm not available, is he capable of sewing it back on? Sure. sure, no problem. There are guys who couldn't do that if their life depended on it. We are older. Mm -hmm. The two of us supplied most of the energy to build all of what is on our property. I moved all of the concrete block to build the utility building and the workshop. We used, we moved all of the wood ourselves. I did a substantial amount of the framing. Irene and I did all of the finishing in mm -hmm. here. And I got on top of the roof to to do the roofing, mm -hmm. not my favorite thing, especially when there's dust on the metal roof because they get slick. it's like ice. Yeah. So we did all this work ourselves. We but did. we did it 16 years ago. You have to look at your circumstances. You know, if anything were to happen to Henry, would I stay here? Probably Maybe for, not. probably for a very short period of time to get a long enough, a long stuff. enough to get Everything organized so that I wasn't just throwing things away. Would I stay out here full time by myself? No. No, not in the no. winter time especially. That's a fact of really out there rural life. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of people around to help you. There's no. not a police department that you can call no. on that can actually do anything. So we were at a, at a, a, a social club meeting for the landowners here the other day. And this lady came in and she says, I need to talk to somebody. We need to do something about my neighbor. They're running their generator 24 seven. And we went, and? If you want noise ordinances, if you want a noise ordinance that allows you to call and say, shut it down. You know, they're, they're making too much noise. It's past 10 o'clock at night. I don't want to listen to their generator or the decibel level is too high or anything. You have to live inside a town that has those things. The rural areas anywhere in the country that I'm aware of, generally speaking, don't have those kind of rules. And they won't have those kind of rules until they're suburbanized. AAA does not go out on dirt roads in Arizona. They don't. Now, they changed it. When we moved here, they did. Yeah, I've thought about leaving the homestead, especially once I had the accident and I was no longer able to do the kinds of things I was able to do before the accident. It's not that I'm physically not competent, although that's starting to happen too. It's because my brain wasn't working the way that needs to work to do some of the things that I need to do. Mm -hmm. And we still have to ask, where would you go? We have a lot of emotional investment in this place at this point. We built this house with our hands. I think there's, there's really, as you get older, especially as you get towards, let's see, I think I was, I think that somebody called me elderly the other day. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm over 65 for certain, but I certainly don't think of myself no, as elderly. you're not elderly. You shouldn't go anywhere where you could get anything exotic. Let's see, in Houston, I could get dengue fever, or uh, there's places in the United States, I think you can still get yellow fever a couple of places. You could get Zika several places in the United States. That's all sounds pretty exotic to me. You're telling me I should sit on the sofa and wait to die. <laughs> no. I don't need that kind of input. 
uh, one of the problems with some of these rural areas is the, the I, did you see the letter from the, the end of the other day? Oh, you probably haven't read it. I no. think it's still on the table. <clears throat> they sent us a note saying, we have some new physicians. They're not, they're not actually all physicians. I think they're mostly nurse practitioner types right. and stuff like that. They all look like they're about 19. They're coming right out of med school. Good. Yes, they won't retire. But I'm sorry, I kind of like somebody who's a little past the I'm practicing on you stage. Well, <laughs> they'll, they'll practice for two years and move on, but that's okay. He's, yeah. he's here because he wanted to do rural medicine. But yes, we have thought about leaving. We don't have any place we would choose to go. Right now, under the current disease-ridden pandemic status of the world, we'll take it. We'll stay here. So there's, there's a really simple way of boiling this down. When you're young and you're healthy, it's easy to look at a difficult lifestyle like living off-grid here in yes. the high desert of northern Arizona. But as you get older, you may have physical limitations. Mm -hmm. If you develop a chronic disease that requires frequent medical visits or medical interventions, you might want to think about not sticking around in rural America, no matter where it is. Yeah, I mean, you have to consider, you know, um, that you can actually get a con contract with a life flight company here. They'll pick you up at the church and they'll life flight you anywhere. And if you have the contract, it doesn't cost you anything. You just, it's part of, it's like, it's a type of insurance. Most people never use it. We had it for a couple of years when we were, didn't have other insurance uh, because a life flight will cost you like 20K. It seemed like a sensible thing to do. The other thing is if you have the, uh, the death of a spouse or partner or somebody who is a vital part of your support team, stuff. yeah, you really have to assess, can you handle everything yes. completely by yourself? You know, I see it all the time on, on, on the YouTube channels that we watch. Some couples, either of them can handle pretty much. Other couples, as the female has learned to do something, she's much better at stuff than the guy, and it <laughs> cracks me up. And, and, and because, you know, he, she wasn't allowed to do this stuff. And once she was allowed to do it, all of a sudden, she's a heck of a lot better at it than he is, which is a riot. You know, you have to say if one or the other were incapacitated, because it's not always death. Maybe you just fall and break a leg and you can't do things for a while. Or you get a herniated disc and you can't do. Yes, you can't do anymore. Or, you know, or you shouldn't do and you could wind up in a wheelchair if you do. What is your contingency plan? What are you going to do if something happens? You know, do you have to, like I say, most of the women will leave, especially if they came out in the 60s or 70s with a spouse and they were playing the Ozzie and Harriet game where he did all the hand stuff and she was the little cook and the housekeeper. The women leave. They cannot do the mechanicals. They can't walk into the, to the uh, utility building and look at the battery and say, I need to start up the generator and then go plug a generator in, make sure it's got enough oil, make sure it's got enough gas and start it up. Lots of people can live in our area as long as they have power. The water can be problematic, but the big thing is the power. But where we are, you have to be able to handle the power and you have to be able to handle the water. And if you can't handle both of those, you can't stay here. I'm expecting that sometime in the future, I'm not sure when, we will decide if we're both still alive that it's too rough mm -hmm. and that we'll need to move someplace else. I don't know where. I don't know under what, under what conditions or circumstances, no. but it's going to happen. Yeah, well, you know, like the, uh, one of the people we know out here who is a, a realtor said that uh, she would get calls from people who owned property out here that had bought it back in the 70s. And they're like, well, you know, uh, so they paved the roads now and put in electricity, right? Uh, no, the roads are still dirt and there's no power. Really? It, they were sold swampland, in effect. They were, it was like buying a piece of swamp in Florida. They were told that this piece of property that they were spending good money for was going to escalate dramatically and be worth a gazillion dollars and have power and water and this and that and the other thing within just a few years. Some things will change at some point, but whether that's enough to make it less challenging? Yeah. 
I not don't think so. Not during our lifetime. Not during our lifetime. Just because there's power lines out here doesn't mean you can get power. That's something that people need to understand. Sometimes if they put high tension lines or something in, that line, that line is just moving through the area. You're not allowed to actually pull on it and get power. You know, it, when you're young and, it's, and, and a lot of parts of the United States are rural, but you still have a mailbox at the end of your driveway. When we lived in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains, we still had a mailbox at the end of our driveway. And at the end of our dirt driveway, there was a paved road which was plowed by the county. We've got friends who lived in the Eastern Sierras right now, and they have to plow their driveway, but at the end of that driveway is a road that is plowed by the county. One of the things you have to look at is how far do you have to go before there's road maintenance? And we were kind of lied to when we bought this place. We had no understanding that nothing outside of our driveway gets maintenance and the driveway gets maintenance from us. So that's a whole different level. That means there's people that UPS does not come to your house. FedEx does not come to your house. DLA, DHL will not come to your house. Uh, the water guy will come to your house. Maybe. And the propane guy will come to your house. If they can get through because the road's in good enough shape. You know? So it's a different balance. And you have to look at that objectively. Some areas you can watch a development happening and you can see that within five years, there's gonna be major structural changes. There's gonna be major changes in the way things are done. They're gonna pave the roads or at least put gravel down. They're gonna do it. That's not gonna happen out here for 50 years. Do you know what time it is, Irene? Yes, it's time to go. So be sure to like, subscribe and hit that <laughs> notification bell because we hope we've given you some food for thought. You really have to think about these things it's easy when you're young. You're invincible. You're going to be able to do this stuff forever. When you're older and you're less invincible, <laughs> um, you know, I'm, uh, it's just a whole different thing. It's a whole different thing. And you have to look at, you know, yeah, you're healthy now. Will you be healthy in 10 years? Hey, I know people who are healthy until the day they die. And that's awesome. That's not the norm, but it's awesome. Or you're healthy enough. You're basically physically able to get around. You're physically able to do things, you know. But if you get two feet of snow and you're snowed in for a month, are you going to be okay? Say goodbye, Irene. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications because we're still going to be doing a lot more stuff. Oh, yeah. And I don't know about you, but I plan to be here for a good long while. Yeah, yeah. And the seedlings are coming up really nicely in the greenhouse, and I'm waiting for another tray of seedlings to come up. So... Obviously, there's lots happening. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.